Sharing your faith with others can seem intimidating at first. You might know the message, but struggle with how to communicate it in a clear and simple way. Fortunately, CCO has developed a tool called The Ultimate Relationship. This booklet presents the four-point gospel message in a clear, unintimidating way that allows them to respond and put Jesus at the center of their life. Naturally, the more familiar you are with the book, the more creative you can get. But you can also just share it exactly the way it is in print as well. Notice that as I share it, I maintain eye contact and I'm not saying anything particularly different than what's written in the book. Lucky for me, my friend Jen is here and I'm gonna share the book with her today. Are you ready? Yep, okay. So this is the ultimate relationship book that I was talking about and I found it made a lot of sense at explaining it what's at the core of the Christian faith. Um, can I share it with you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you ever wonder what life is all about? Is there a higher power? What is our purpose? Why are we here? Is there more to this life? If you could know God personally, would you want to? This booklet will help you find the answers to some of these questions and reveal some helpful truths about life. So first, we are created for a relationship. God created us to have a personal relationship with him now and forever. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are? It's from 1 John. God wants us to know his love and experience his fulfilling plan for each of us. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. It's from Jeremiah. Do you think that we perceive and encounter God in this personal way? No, I don't think most people do. I think we kind of perceive him as a faraway God. Our relationship is broken. The problem in all of our lives is sin, our turning away from God in what we have done and what we have failed to do. Sin severs our relationship and separates us from him. The image to the left, right here, symbolizes the separation our sins create and the consequences that sin has brought about. Some of the consequences of this separation are guilt, emptiness, or feeling far from God. But sin has an even greater consequence, eternal separation from God. For the wages of sin is death. It's from Romans. However, there is good news because our relationship can be restored. We see on this page that it is Jesus who restores our relationship. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It's from John. By his cross, Jesus took upon himself the consequences of our sins and the sin of the whole human race. By his rising from the dead, he brought us new life. Jesus alone restores our relationship with God by bridging the gap caused by sin. That is why he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, from the book of John. We can experience this restored relationship. We see on this page the relationships diagram. The top three images represent levels of commitment in three kinds of human relationships. The first image represents someone who is single. There's no romantic relationship in their life. The second image represents someone who is dating. This relationship is part of their life, but the commitment is limited. The third image represents someone who is married. There is an intimate relationship and a permanent mutual commitment. Let's compare this to our relationship with God. So the bottom three images represent levels of commitment in a relationship with God. The first image represents someone who does not have a relationship with Jesus. As far as this person is concerned, Jesus is outside of their life. The second image represents someone who acknowledges Jesus as a part of their life, but has not completely committed to him. 
Jesus is just one aspect of their life among many others. The third image represents a Christ-centered relationship. This relationship is primary and central, influencing all decisions and every aspect of their life. So Jen, which image best represents your relationship with God? Probably the second image. Okay, and which image would you like to have represent your relationship with God? Well, I'd like it to be the third image, but I'm not even sure if that's possible. Well, we see on this page that it all comes to the invitation. So Jesus desires to be at the center of your life. Pope Benedict said that if we let Christ into our lives, we lose nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing of what makes life free, beautiful, and great. No, only in this friendship are the doors of life open wide. Only in this friendship is the great potential of human existence truly revealed. Do not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open, open wide the doors to Christ and you'll find true life. The book of Revelation says, listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. So Jen, do you know how we respond to this invitation or this knocking? No. With a prayer of the heart. Whether you've been close or far from him in the past, he is waiting for you to open the door. Take a look at the following prayer. This prayer invites Jesus to be at the center of our lives. So Jen, would you like to invite Jesus to be at the center of your life? Yes. Okay, so let's step out in faith and pray to him right now. We're going to do the sign of the cross, and then we'll read together out loud this prayer. Okay? All right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I believe that you know me and love me. I have not always chosen to love you and have broken my relationship with you through my sins. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who proved your love for me on the cross. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart, and I invite you to be at the center of my life, to be my Savior and my Lord. Direct me by your Holy Spirit and help me to live the gospel with my whole life. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Jesus, he heard your prayer, and he wants to be in this relationship with you. Thanks, Kate. So after sharing the UR to this point, you can continue on and finish the last two pages, or you can share them over the next couple of days. Continue to reassure them over the next couple days. You can do this by, if possible, taking them to receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation. That's one way to share the UR clearly and simply. Thanks for helping me out. Anytime. <laughs>